الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبی وسلم اما بعد احب تف اللہ دیر از گریٹ ان امینس بیوٹی ان دا ذکر آف اللہ سب حنا تعالیٰ این وٹ از نون از دا حوقلہ میننگ ٹو سی لا حول و لا قوت الا بلّہ وچ مینس دیر از نو مائٹ نور پاور save Allah tabarak wa ta'ala there's no might nor power except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah has immense benefit for the believer and from some from among some of those benefits that the ulama sunna mention imam ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions He says, as for the effect that la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah has in removing sickness, as in worries and sorrows, meaning that saying la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah is one of the ways that we combat stress uh, and, and sickness and sorrow, sadness. He says, then it is because It entails consigning completely to Allah the Exalted, freeing oneself of any ability or strength except through Him, submitting all matters to Him, and lack of dispute with Him in any of what follows. This shows that when we utter this statement, if we utter this statement consciously, as a means of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله that we are acknowledging that all the power and strength and all of our power and strength is only due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is only because your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with the ability your ability to do, to achieve, to attain is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone it's only from His favor لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله، and that this is a means for addressing sorrow and anxiety، and I don't think there's a single one of us who doesn't from time to time experience sorrow and anxiety and stress in our lives، and perhaps some of us experience most of our life with sorrow and stress and anxiety، so it is imperative to know the prophetic ways. of dealing with the difficulties and stress of life. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله Then Ibn al-Qayyim, he mentions, he says, the generality of the statement refers to every change from one situation to another in both the upper and lower worlds, and including the strength in doing such a change. And that it is all from Allah, the exalted alone. Therefore, nothing can stand before or in the way of this world. In some narrations, it is reported nothing descends from or ascends to the heaven except through la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. It is also has an amazing effect in repelling the shaitan. So, ahabatif Allah, there's no doubt that we're in need of reflecting on the meaning of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah and there is no question in my mind that we need to incorporate such a simple dhikr to our arsenal of how to deal with sickness and sorrow and sadness and grief and suffering in our lives and for sure that we need as many tools as we can gain to deal with the shaitan, the accursed shaitan al-rajim, and all the devils and the shayateen from mankind and jinn, that we need as many ways and weapons to deal with the evil and to repel evil. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And bless us with a class with the bad. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. 
على نبينا محمد وعلى علي وصحبه وسلم